All right, now it's time to discuss about project schedule management. Here we are in part one. We will have a quick, a really quick overview. In part two, we will get into details. In fact, introduction to project schedule management is not a big topic, but just for the convenience reason, it's divided into two parts. All right, now we have the complete scope on hand. It's time to plan to convert the scope into deliverables. Let's start our plan from project schedule management. First, let's look at the definition. Project schedule management is all about managing the project schedule by creating a detailed plan that represents how and when the project will be delivered. Scope management is all about managing the project scope. Similarly, schedule management is all about, you know it, managing the project schedule effectively in a project. In this knowledge area, you create the project schedule plan and manage the schedule throughout the project. The way the project is scheduled depends on the project lifecycle and the project scope. In scheduling tool, I mean in the scheduling software, you will be entering the project specific data such as activities, planned dates, duration, resources, dependencies and constraints to create the scheduling model for the project. This results project schedule. Of course, nowadays no one does manual scheduling, right? Before we get into the list of process in the project schedule management, let's think for a while logically. What do you generally do once we get the project on hand to prepare the schedule? Let's take the example of our construction project. First and foremost, you need to decide what sort of scheduling approach will work for this project. This depends on the project lifecycle and type of project that we said earlier. In our construction example, the activities and schedule that are planned for villa may not work as it is for the semi-independent villa or for the apartment because the activities and the duration vary largely. What works well for one may not or need not to work for others. Generally, you break down the scope into list of activities. In PIMBAC terms, it's called define activities. Once the activities are defined, you sequence them, right? Because while listing down the activities, you won't be focusing on the logical order. Rather, your complete focus is on identify all the activities to achieve the project deliverables. So, in the next step, you sequence the activities in logical order so that you know what comes first and what comes next. Then, you estimate how long each activity will take. That is, you do duration estimate for each activity. This is called estimate activity duration in PIMBOK terminology. Once the necessary information is available, you will key in the information into the project scheduling software and you develop schedule model. Of course, as said in the beginning, you do everything using the computer softwares. I'm sure you will be using some of the scheduling software in your organization such as Primavera, IMS Project or even Microsoft Excel. So, this process of creating project schedule is called as develop schedule in PIMBOK terminology. As you start executing what is planned, you start monitoring what activities are running as per the plan and what are not running as per the plan. If the activities slip out of the plan, you make the plan to bring them back to track. This is called control schedule in PIMBOK terminology. Often the project schedule used as communication tool with the stakeholders. One of the key responsibility of any project manager is to ensure that there is a plan for the project and the project gets executed as per the plan. The deliverables are made as per the committed date. As the project progresses, the project manager collects the work performance information to communicate to the project stakeholders to make them aware about project progress. Practically, most often every project manager uses software even for this communication. For smaller projects, they define activities, sequence activities, estimate activity duration and develop schedule are tightly linked and they may work as a single process that can be performed by one single person relatively in very short period of time. And don't forget, these processes are presented in the PIMBOK guide in distinct element for the better understanding about the process. Not just this, in fact, every process. But in reality, they may overlap with each other. It's a good idea to understand what the software does in the background, right? Because there may be questions in the sample examination to draw the diagram for schedule 
and calculate the critical path of the project. Don't worry, we have a separate session and a detailed discussion on this topic. Okay, let's quickly summarize. Project Schedule Management Knowledge Area has six processes. First, Plan Schedule Management, where you plan the scheduling approach that will work well for this project. In fact, plan is the first process, not just in schedule management, but also in other knowledge area. If you recollect in scope management, what is the first process? You are right, plan scope management. Similarly, for rest of the knowledge area, plan in the knowledge area is the first process. The word plan represents getting prepared, selecting the right tool, templates, process, from the available n number of options that will work well for the project. It's because every project is unique and you as a project manager should select the right tools and techniques that will work for this project. Second, define activities where you list down the activities. Third, sequence activities where you sequence them in logical order. Fourth, estimate activity duration where you do estimation for each activity. Fifth one, develop schedule. You key in all the project information into the project management software to develop project schedule model. Sixth and the final, control schedule, where you keep an eye on the activities that are in execution to ensure that they run as per the plan and do necessary course correction as needed. All right, that wraps up our overview, part one. Let's move to part two.